Dog vs. Cat, an ancient rivalry for the ages, and for the internet's endless entertainment. But what makes these two familiar pets behave so differently? Today on Pet Spotlight, we're going behind the memes to explore the science separating dogs from cats. Just how deep does this epic battle between canine and feline go? Let's dive in. First, how did dogs and cats come to be household pets? We need a quick history lesson. Dogs were the first species domesticated by humans with archeological evidence tracing back over 14,000 years. Their friendly, cooperative nature made them ideal hunting partners and protectors of human settlements. Cats, on the other hand, were late to the domestication game. Wild cats began gradually inhabiting farming villages around 10,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent. That's an area in the modern-day Middle East where some early civilizations began. These solitary desert creatures realized that hanging out near human food stores brought easy access to mice and rats. So while not providing work and companionship like dogs, cats' skill as a natural pest control still made them valuable. Over time, humans encouraged this symbiotic relationship by providing food scraps to some of the more docile cats. But it wasn't until cat breeding began in Egypt around 1500 BC, that's only about 3500 years ago, that cats became fully domesticated pets. So in today's domesticated breeds, who's the real social butterfly of the family? Recent data show that about 45 million homes have a dog and 32 million have a cat. With so many furry pals around, a growing number of homes have both cats and dogs living under the same roof. The stereotype is that dogs are super friendly while cats prefer their solitude. One survey of over 1,200 households with both dogs and cats found the most common word owners associated with their dogs was playful. The most common words associated with cats? Disinterested, aggressive, and fearful. Not really a terrible surprise based on the way dogs and cats are represented in pop culture, right? So with that in mind, what do you think were the most common responses of dogs when they approached their cat siblings? The study found that these were the most frequent responses for a dog who sees a cat. Attack, bark, wag their tail, and growl. And I love this stat, only 0.1% of dogs will ignore a cat. If that doesn't say it all about dogs' curiosity and sociability, I don't know what does. Flip it around and cats are much more standoffish. The most common responses when a cat sees a dog? Run away, ignore, hiss, and only 13% approach the dog with friendly intentions. So do you think cats and dogs can really be friends? First, a quick pause to say we hope you enjoy Pet Spotlight and thanks for taking a minute to like this video and to find the subscribe button. According to the survey, the answer is yes, with some important caveats. About two-thirds of owners said their dog and cat played together regularly. Is that number bigger than you expected? It was for me. It turns out a majority of dogs and cats like to chase each other around and wrestle playfully. This suggests that even though they speak different languages, dogs and cats can enjoy friendly relationships. Speaking of those different languages, dogs tend to use their tails much more expressively to communicate than cats do. Dogs rely on tail positioning heavily to communicate their mood, but their tail language can get lost in translation, especially with cats. Let's look at a few examples. A straight up tail? Cats might be feeling confident, while dogs are probably feeling dominant or attentive. A tail swishing back and forth slowly? This usually means that cats are focused or they're in hunting mode, while dogs might be feeling cautious. A fast twitching or a wagging tail? This means cats are usually agitated, but dogs could be feeling playful or joyful. This is one of the bigger differences in tail behavior, and it might help explain why dogs are always running up to cats to play, but misinterpreting the signals from their feline friends. Speaking the right language is also super important for this next difference, trainability. When it comes to training, dogs shine while cats are much harder to decipher. Generations of breeding have created dogs who understand human cues easily and they're eager to learn and perform behaviors for praise or for treats. Basically, dogs' brains are wired for it. But good luck getting your cat to shake paw on command. Independent cats tend to only comply when they feel like it and they often ignore human signals. But cats aren't completely unteachable. There's lots of resources out there about click training for cats, for example. 
Click training can help shape desired cat behaviors by marking the good actions with a sound and then rewarding the cat. But it's tricky. Cats don't endlessly repeat tasks like a golden retriever or a lab would. And many aren't as treat motivated either. Their aloof nature means that training sessions have to be brief and engaging. Here's a difference between dogs and cats that can be painful if you learn it the hard way on bath day. Why is it that cats despise water while many dogs will just run into the lake or the ocean, the sprinkler, or whatever? To understand this puzzle, we have to look at the evolutionary journey of both of these species. Cats descended from solitary desert dwellers who really lacked a reason to swim. Therefore, their thick coats didn't develop to be water resistant, and it makes swimming really challenging for them. Cats also meticulously groom their fur to deposit an oily layer on it to maintain insulation, and getting wet ruins that delicate balance. For self-grooming cats, getting soaked is miserable. In contrast, dogs evolved as highly versatile hunters. They needed to be able to pursue their prey by land or by water. So for certain breeds at least, they have streamlined bodies, webbed paws, and water-resistant coats that made retrieving ducks or fish a rewarding challenge. Their anatomy adapted to aid swimming and diving with paddle-shaped paws, flexible spines, and muscular hind limbs that can power them through the water. This ancestral history explains why labs might happily fetch sticks in the water for hours while cats lurk at the water's edge. Here's another question. Why does catnip affect cats, but not dogs? Catnip intoxicates cats, but it barely phases your dog. What's the secret behind this plant's profound but selective effects? The answer lies in nepetalactone, the essential oil that gives catnip its special appeal. Nepetalactone molecules closely mimic cat pheromones that are related to happiness and euphoria, so when they inhale it, it overstimulates these receptors in a cat's nose and brain, causing the blissed out rolling, licking, and rubbing that cat owners love to watch. But nepetalactone doesn't fit nicely into dog pheromone receptors. So while a few dogs might nibble on catnip for its grassy flavor, they really don't experience the same intoxicating high that cats do. Dogs do have their own pheromones that mimic relaxing hormones released by nursing moms, and pheromone diffusers with these compounds might be able to chill out anxious pups, but they lack a clear parallel to catnip's euphoric sensations. What's something else that's uniquely feline? The litter box. When it comes to potty habits, cats win paws down for tidiness and convenience thanks to their excellent innate litter box skills. This traces back again to their desert origins. Cat urine evolved to be more concentrated to conserve water, and kittens instinctively seek out loose sandy spots that are reminiscent of the desert to relieve themselves. This makes litter box training nearly effortless. Dogs, on the other hand, were omnivorous scavengers and they never faced any water scarcity pressures. They used their urine to mark territory and to communicate with other dogs. So without an instinct to seek out specific textures or locations, house training a dog requires actively reinforcing going outside. Otherwise, they'll find what they think are convenient spots to mark all over your house. You should watch this next video on even more surprising facts about dog ownership and how people make decisions about getting a new dog. Thanks for joining us here on Pet Spotlight. We hope you learned something new like we did from this fascinating research. Until next time.